Hi, my name is Willix, and this is Project Ozone, Episode 4. Did a few things in between sessions. I enlarged my base. I had lots of cobblestone now, so it's a little bigger around here. Uh, one of the first things I want to show you, I noticed that I've got some mobs in my mob farm. I made a few changes to the mob farm. There's skellies? Yeah, there's skellies in there. Let's see if I can do this without killing any skellies yet. Uh, zombie won't matter. There's no... Yeah, okay. See this little button here? Watch what happens when I press it. That's witch water going through. I'm now killing wither skeletons. Okay, we got two wither skulls out of that. So I've been getting lots of wither skulls using this. A miniature heart, cool. And more zombie flesh, that's good too. And I made some of my common bags into uncommon and a few of my uncommon into rare. You just put four in a grid and away they go. So let's explain how this thing's uh, working. Okay, up in here is one bucket of witch water inside those purple s cubes there. Behind this red one is a redstone torch. Okay, when I press the blue button, it lets out one set of witch water because the blue button turns that torch off and then it goes back on. And up here is a piston. Let me give you a better look at that. We'll take this apart for a sec. See the piston, when it's in an upright position, it stops the witch water. When it comes down, the witch water flows in. This is seven long, which is the length of time that uh, liquid flows. Well, water type liquids, not lava. There we go. And we'll just get rid of this before my inventory all fills up. And the way I got the witch water is I ground down some, s sieve down some sand until I got an ancient spore. I put the ancient spore on some dirt with a barrel full of water and I turned it into witch water. Okay, getting back on to some of the stuff about this base that I changed. I've got an elevator over here. That's just some wool and stuff. Whoops. And I've got a basement. So my basement is three larger than the upper part of my base. So if I do fall off the upper part, I land in the basement. I used glowstone nooks to light up the basement. That way if I accidentally get some water flowing down here, it doesn't wash away all the torches. The glowstone nooks stay there. I also use glowstone nooks up here. So those things that look like lights up there are actually a cobblestone cover with a glowstone nook underneath. And that's what's li lighting my upper part of my base. Now when you're using glowstone nooks, be careful. Don't put them on the edge. See, if I press shift and move out to the edge, I seem to be okay. Or am I? If I turn this way, boom, I fall off. Let's see that again. Shift. I don't fall off until I turn over here. And as I make the transition from one height to another, I fall off. Don't blame Nux. It's the same for other things. For instance, half slaps. Same issue. When you change height, you can fall off. Just be warned of that. Okay, what I did down here. 
There's a barrel that I put all the saplings and sheared leaves in. They come down, get fed into barrels. The barrels turn them into dirt, put them up into this barrel up here. Uh, and I've gone through quite a few stacks of dirt. Uh, other things down here. Okay. That's the cauldron I'm making the lava in to make the cobble and such. It's also being pumped through here into the smeltery. The smeltery also controller get fed by this uh, chest and the basin and the casting table can get fed into this chest here. The red bricks I, that's just done with uh, chisel and chisel the, I put them red if there's lava up there blue if there's water that's my infinite source over there just to remind me so I don't uh, break those blocks accident and accidentally okay something else you need to know um, I made myself a new uh, weapon uh, an axe though is odd. Here, are, most people would have made a one of these a cleaver. But look at this skill XP figure, the fourth thing down. It's 1788. In other words, I gotta kill an awful lot of stuff before it levels at all. I wanted something where I could put a number of levels beheading on it and have it ex go up very quickly giving me lots of modifier slots. So I came over here and let's take a look at what if I were to make a regular sword. Well, that's nearly as bad. 958. Well, that's twice as good, I guess. But that's still pretty slow. What if instead I were to make an axe? 166. In other words, it levels really quick. And I put four levels beheading, and I'm grandmaster with this thing now. It has the added bonus that every time I chop down a tree, I get experience. It's not just from killing mobs. So lots of beheading, and I'm getting lots of heads that way. So I decided to go this route instead. If you don't want to invest the ender pearls to put the beheading on it, it's one each time you do, then go with the um, cleaver it comes with one beheading automatically but don't expect to level it up very much alright other things up here I use some fertilized dirt so fertilized dirt let me show you what that is Oops. It's just some rotten flesh around a piece of dirt with some bone meal in place. What this stuff does is when the block gets a growth tick, or a tick, when the block gets ticked, it tells the plant above it to try to grow. That's the way it normally works. With this fertilized earth, it ticks the plant three times each time it gets a tick. So basically it's going to grow the plants about three times as fast. Not exactly, but rule of thumb. And I ran out of uh, zombie flesh so I didn't make it to the oak trees yet. Now it's worked really well for the sugar cane. Not so well for the rubber trees. I'm not sure what's going on there. And I'd not sure what other things it will work with it in this pack. I'll have to try it out. Something else to talk about. The uh, smeltery over here. I put a clock over top of the um, faucet. 
So what happens is the clock every one few seconds gives a tick to the faucet. So when I put something in and I want it to turn into ingots, I just put that there and it'll automatically flow in there. The advantage to this over a pipe is it only pours exactly one ingot each time. I don't have to worry about fluid getting stuck in the pipe or partial pours or anything along those lines. Something else interesting I did over here is actually let's show you something else first. I made a gear cast right there. How you make gear cast, because we need them in a second, so we'll cover it off now, is first off you got to make a stone gear. If you try to do it this way, I'll make two of them. I'm going to need them later for something else. That's an Ender I.O. stone gear. That one won't work. I'll show you in a sec. What you have to do is make a wood gear first. Put the wood gear in there. And I don't have enough cobble here. I've got a bunch of cobble in here that i got to get rid of. then make your stone gear. You come over here and if you put the Ender IO one it won't pour. But uh, actually I don't want to make another... Uh, well we will. I won't be able to remelt this. That way you can make your uh, gear cast. And inconveniently, this thing doesn't want to take them. I can't remelt them. Stuck with two new. All right. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. The way this thing works is I melted down the aluminum brass first, and then I brought the uh, put a tank over here and had it flow out into the tank. Then I took, brought the tank around, put it over here, put a seared faucet on it. That's a casting table there. And I just pressed the, the seared faucet. Now notice that it says weird amounts on it. It says 4,032. There's actually quite a bit in there. It's about 16, no, almost 32 ingots worth. Um, that's for some reason, liquid metals aren't showing up as regular buckets. This thing should only be fitting 32 buckets grand total, and it looks like it's only fitting four when there's 32 in there. So you don't need a hardened tank to do this. You can get away with a regular tank and still get uh, lots of fluid in it. All right, that sort of covers off the things I did uh, off camera. Let's get on to some quests here. Obviously, I finished this one off. I killed lots of stuff. On this one, I think we've got something worthwhile. Yeah, there's an epic bag in here. So if you don't know one, which one it is, close your eyes now. you can open your eyes again. Two full hearts. Well, that's not bad. I don't mind getting two full hearts. Actually, let's get rid of some of this other stuff that I've got here. Uh, didn't want those things on me. Okay. Next up. Autonomous activators. So let's see what we need to do for them. Why am I not seeing? 
There it is. Just because I can't see. So I'm going to need a redstone reception coil. I'm going to need two of them. I left my gold over here. Is this lightning going to kill me? One, two. One, two, one, two. All right, and we have two autonomous activators. I'd already made the gears in advance. Okay, and autonomous. They're all good bags, so it doesn't matter which one. And I really wanted that uh, hammer last time. <laughs> Moon stuff. Again. Hmm. We didn't already have some? Okay. Next up, auto saving. This might be a little more interesting. Whoops, wrong thing, there we go. So we're gonna need an electrum gear. I already made one of those actually. And we're going to need, whoops, we're going to need invar nuggets. And I think my electrum gear is over in here. And we've got to make our uh, silk. And that should be it. Yes. Done. Now we've got to make a spe speed upgrade. Blazing Pirate. Or pyrethane dust. That's uh, more difficult than it sounds because I've got nothing to pulverize coal with yet. Now I could make an actual pulverizer, but I think I'm going to do something uh, manual and easy to make for now. Uh, AE has a grinder, a manual one. So I'm going to need three quarts and a wooden. Uh, here. So, one, two, three. And as we saw before, wooden gear is that way. Then we also need a hand crank to make this work. And I think I'll stick it over here somewhere. We're going to need some coal. Right click it till it uh, finishes. There we go. One pulverized coal. And we're going to need uh, one sulfur. This is everything from gravel, everything from sand, everything from dust. And one of these. And we're we working speed. Oops, what do we need? Oh, we need 
Electrum uh, Nuggets. Oh, I haven't made the uh, make that first. Now we're where to go? Actually, I could have used uh, more of those actually. Alright. Oh, and we need fortune upgrades. Them I'm not particularly fond of. Got everything in there. So, fortune upgrades. And that does it. So for this one, which is auto saving, there's an epic. So um, close your eyes. You can open them again. Chance cube scanner. That means the once the cube is scanned, we can see what the percentages are on it. Speed belt and belt of water walking. Interesting. From bobbles. Speed walk. Okay. Let's bring up our bobbles inventory. Oops. And let's try the speed walking belt. Yep, we're way quicker. Isn't that going to be nice? I can fall off the island even faster. It's full. Start a new one. Okay. Next one, generators. Let's talk about them a little bit just before we do them. Now, for power, a lot of people would start looking through the generator list and look at what they're familiar with. And they'd look at something like the survivalist generator. That has not been buffed at all. It only puts out its measly five, uh, um, five RF per tick. People like it because it's very fuel efficient. We're going to have more fuel efficient things later on, like no fuel. Uh, so bad choice for the survivalist generator. Or they might have looked at the lava generator. The lava generator hasn't been buffed either, so it puts a 80 RF per tick. There's much better choices. They might have decided to go with something like a dynamo. The magmatic dynamo. The magmatic dynamo, it's fairly easy to make. Uh, and it has been buffed a little bit. It will put out, doesn't show it there, it'll put out uh, 160 RF per tick. It normally only puts out 80. It's been buffed for this pack, so they've doubled it. But we can still do better. Let's take a look at the sterling generator they want us to make. really cheap just some stone and stuff and it puts out 250 RF if you stick a bucket of lava in it and that bucket lasts for eight minutes and some odd seconds so pretty good choice that way mind you're gonna manually fill it feed it buckets but um, 250 RF per tick is pretty good 
we can do better. Let's take a look at the heat generator that they want us to do. Again, cheap as hell. You got to make some osmium. You can't make it in the smeltery, but you can make it in a furnace. Other than that, it's really simple stuff. We need to make three of these things. The way these work is if you put a bucket of lava underneath it, and let's say three buckets on three different sides, and just leave them there as source lava, they will generate 4,000 no, not 4,000, 42,000 RF per tick with the four lava. Adding a fifth side doesn't help any. They don't uh, do any more. So you want four sides done. So bottom and three sides. That's an amazing amount. 42,000 RF per tick. And we're making three of them. So that's 120,000 RF per tick. Probably the best choice in the pack. Another good choice is the wind turbine, but it's not going to compare to this on how easy this thing is to make and uh, how much power it puts out. Uh, just so you know, the wind turbines put out... Uh, where were we here? At this level, 14,000 per tick. At uh, t level 250, they put out 44,000 RF per tick. But you got to go all the way up high to get the good amount. Okay, so let's make these things. Heat generator, since we're on that page. We want one. Whoops. Two, three. Okay. Sterling generator. We made those gears before. I've already made the piston. All right, that should take care of that quest. And I think this one, the rewards all suck, if I remember correctly. Uh, this is Sterling. Sterling, yeah, they're both basic bags, so pick whatever you want. If you want the cold coke or a basic bag. I've got lucky a couple of times on basic bags. Let's see what we get this time. A walrus. Not so lucky this time. Junk. All right, so let me show you what we do with these uh, heat generators. We'll put, notice there's lava underneath. Put one there. Whoops. And. Oh, uh, what I need to do first is I want to get rid of these blocks. They were just to place the uh, generators. I cut these panels with a saw. Use some sandy glass, sorry, uh, hardened glass to do it. Oops. That's all it takes, and those things will generate uh, 42,000 RF per tick. Oh, the power has to come out of this side here. It can't come out of the, any of the other sides or the top or anything. All right, that covers this stuff. 
And what was next? Okay, this is nuts. A resident pulverizer. Um, that is difficult to make at this particular point in the game. Um, it's actually the uh, not the resident one so much as it is the hold on the sec when we get to the machine frame for reinforce. We gotta make sigmalium. Sigmalium We got to somehow get liquid redstone. Now, whoops, I got off on a sidetrack that was not so good here. If we tried to do it in the smeltery, we have to melt down redstone. Redstone doesn't melt with lava. We'd have to put uh, promethium in there. Uh, blazing promethium to melt the lava, the redstone. That's a pain in the butt. It's much easier if we make it. Um, oops. Hold on a sec. Let's let it cycle through again. You can use no, no, not that. The alloy smelter is an easy way to do it: copper, silver, and uh, your redstone. Or you can m melt it down in a ma magma crucible and do it that way. So it's easy once you get machines, but we want the machines first. So I'm going to end this session off here. Next time when we come back. I'm going to get some me machines up and running. I'm going to break from the uh, quests, um, set up auto sieving, and set up some other machines so we can make some of this stuff and make the whole questing part much, much easier. Uh, for further in the future, we want to get into killing a wither because once we get two, um, what are those things called again? The things wither drops. Um, nether stars. Once we get two nether stars, we can become overpowered. And I'll show you how that works later on, but we need two of them to do it. Well, we need one to become overpowered, two if we want to be able to make more nether stars once we do. Well, that's it for now. Hope you uh, learned something from this video. If you like what I've done and want to encourage me to make more of them, please press the like button. If you want to be informed when I come up with new videos, you can subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate the support. Uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks.